Alrighty. Well, uh, yeah, it did. <clears throat> Upper control arm bushings for the axle side, for the on top of the pumpkin, and over there. And then I got some new ball joints for the passenger side. Um, last time I changed ball joints, I changed it on the driver's side because that was the only one at the time that I could see it was bad. And I was going to change both of them anyway, but I just uh, didn't have the money at the time. So I got the money now, so I ordered both of those. I got some adjustable upper control arms on the way. Um, I was hoping I'd have them by now, but they didn't, they didn't ship out. I ordered them early last week. They didn't ship out till. Uh, earlier, or they didn't ship out till like Monday this week, so uh, it says I'm getting them tomorrow, uh, maybe, but uh, I'm in the middle of uh, taking this side apart, already got my caliper taken off, my caliper's kind of tight, I might need a, I know I need new calipers at some point, um, I think this is still good, I definitely need more braided bra uh, brake lines, the uh, it's happened on the other side. The uh, plastic sheathing is uh, coming apart on both sides. Um, these are about five years old, but still they shouldn't. They shouldn't be coming apart like that. Uh, and these weren't in cheap lines either. But uh, I'm starting to loosen up the bolts for the uh, unit bearing. I'm going to try to pull everything out at once like I did the other side. Um... Heck, I don't think I even uh, took this off last time. I think I just, uh, I think I took the knuckle off. I just took the whole knuckle off last time. I think. I don't 100% remember. I think I took the whole knuckle off because I don't remember dealing with the unibearing. Anyway, I want to take the unibearing off anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah. I'm going to change these out and maybe today I'll get to the lower control arm bushings. I, I still got the lower control arm bushings to do. Um, I got the JKS disconnects to do too, but that shouldn't be causing a vibration. Um, lower control arms, these ball joints, the upper control arm, uh, axle mount bushings, and then hopefully tomorrow, if not tomorrow, it's going to be next week, I can do the upper control arms. And everything in the front end will be new at that point. Um, and then I'm going to take it to go get an alignment, because I know if your alignment's really far out, it can also cause a little bit of death wobble. But my death wobble's practically gone uh there's still a little bit of it there but nowhere near as bad as it was i can get up to 60 miles an hour without without it happening but uh anyway let's continue to get this apart so i can get the stuff in all right all right and here comes the unit bearing usually this is the hardest part of the job of of these things is unit bearing they're usually a pain in the butt but you put anises on these things when you take them out. Look how easy that was. That is the power of anises. I put these are about three years old, uh, roughly three years old. Um, I think the last time I've had this side off was probably when I put the locker in, which is, gosh, these are over three years old. I think the locker is about three years old. But uh, yeah, put anises on these, and I put anises on these bolts, and. Uh, they came out, I mean, you just saw how easy I pulled that, I pulled that out. Um, so, NSCs works wonders. If you ever take these things out, put NSCs on it. If not, you're going to, these things are going to be rusted on, and you're going to be doing it all over again like you did the first time you took them off, if you've ever taken them off before. If, you don't, if you've never taken these things off before, you're going to be in for some fun, because it's, it's not easy. Usually you can get an extension in a socket and jam it between here and turn your wheel and it'll pop it out. Um, that's one easy way to do it. Another way is just go around the outside with a flathead and knock it off. But uh, yeah, that's my, uh, and this thing in the last couple years has been wheeled pretty hard too. That's wet. Oh, that's nice. Can't tell. That's water. That's water. Doesn't look like I have any doesn't look like my inner seal is leaking. I hope it's not leaking anyway. It might be leaking, seeping anyway. But, uh, splines look all right. Yeah, the splines, splines are still good. 
But, uh, get some of that axle's dirty. I want to get a, uh, an axle seal to put over this. Um, shoot, I forget what they call it. It's a big seal you can put right here. Keep stuff from going in. And it will also, uh, if you have an axle seal leak, technically you can fill the whole axle. Uh, and everything should stay inside. But, uh, you still wouldn't want to do that. Um, but, uh, I do want to get those seals. But, uh, yeah, these ball joints honestly don't seem bad. I think these are the factory ball joints. The ones on the, or excuse me, I know the ones on the driver's side have been changed because the upper ball joint was a, uh, was a, it, it was caster, it was a caster ball joint. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, it was a camber ball joint. Um, and I didn't put a camper ball joint back in it, so I hope my alignment's pretty good. Anyway, I'll get to it. Yeah, well, I thought I pressed record, but I guess I didn't. I just recorded a couple of minutes and noticed it wasn't recording. But, uh, lower ball joint seems pretty, pretty loose. Um, then again, the, the... The, the nut stuck to the to the bottom. No matter how much I turned it, it started moving. So I lowered the bottom ball joint. It started just spinning the heck out of the bottom with the impact and hammering on it, and it finally came loose. But uh, that looks loose. This looks the upper one looks pretty tight, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but uh, yeah, something I, something something I mentioned when I wasn't recording. This isn't the factory uh, knuckle for the for this. This is actually a knuckle I got out of the, I got out of the junkyard because um, my factory knuckle, the lower caliper bolt stripped out. Um, it was stripped out from when the previous previous owner had it, so got a, a an upsized bolt for it, and uh, it worked for a couple years. And then I was washing it one day and noticed I, didn't, I was missing a lower caliper bolt, so uh, I didn't replace it right away um, because it wasn't worth it. Uh, it wasn't worth me buying another bolt and having it come straight out, so, uh, me being kind of stupid. I drove it for probably about six months, uh, without a lower caliper bolt, and it, the caliper never moved, surprisingly. Um, I didn't change the knuckle out until I put the locker in the front, uh, and when I changed the U-joints, and, uh, it would, I still had to hammer the caliper off, so, it was stuck on there, but, uh, yeah, hopefully I don't need a torch, I mentioned that too. Um, I had to torch my, uh, my knuckles on the driver's side when I took the ball joints out, um, because the press wasn't doing it, I had to actually torch it and then put the press on it. I hope I don't need a torch, because I lost my torch. It's in one of my three vehicles, either one of my two Jeeps or my Yukon, but I, uh, I can't necessarily find it. <clears throat> I might give a, a good once-over if I can't get these out. If not, I'll be running into town and getting another torch. Um... But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be doing my, I, I plan on doing my lower control arms. I plan on doing ball joints and lower control arm bushings. I don't know if I'm going to get to the Moog uh, upper control arm bushings because I, I'd like to do them now. So when I get my upper control arms, I can just drop them in. But at the same time, I don't know. It just depends. I might try to do one side. I might not. Just just depends how much time I got left. Don't want to be working on this thing all night. <clears throat> Not that I got anything better to do, but um, <clears throat> yeah, let me get to it. Alrighty, got one board. there. Got one ball joint moving out. Got the C's in this from the standard ball joint kit. But if you have a solid axle like this, uh, you are going to need either the full drive adapter set or a master adapter set uh... I definitely to get the bottom ball joint out um, i had to do this i think i got the i was able to get the top one out on the driver's side but i couldn't get the bottom one out and i had to go and rent the set this little piece right here is out of this set right here and that's really honestly the only way to get that to go up in there um, also found my torch it's in my under my bottom drawer in my big mess of a toolbox, which I need to clean up. But uh, yeah, it's coming out. 
bond one should be easy. This 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 bleh, this should go a lot quicker than my driver's side did. My driver's side, I spent probably an hour trying to get the one of the ball joints out or in. I don't remember which. Until I fessed up and rented this also. Um, this is a master ball joint set. It does you know does these solid axles and there's also other things that it's useful for. I'm pretty sure you all, you might also need it for like the uh, Danaford 4 out in the back for the for the Yukon. You might need it for that. You might be able to get by with just that. But uh, yeah, it's it's out. So uh, it was easy. Well, all it's left to do is the bottom. Anyway, we'll be back. And got both of them out. That bottom one was a pain in the butt to get out. It heated it up, put pressure on it, heated it up, put pressure on it, heated it up. I had to pull out the, the old school electric impact. Because I couldn't pull it anymore, with, especially with my shoulder. I can't pull it very good with my, with my messed up shoulder. Um, and that's my strong arm. Uh, which is my right arm. So, did that a couple times, heated it up multiple, time, multiple times, hit it with the hammer a couple times, and finally I hit it with the hammer just right and it moved. But, so, yeah. If I had to guess, these are stock ball joints. These are stock Dana ball joints. If I had to guess, these are stock Dana ball joints. Um, of course, no markings on them. But, uh, I don't know. All I know is that the, the driver's side has been, had a miscellaneous ball joint. But, anyway, let's get these other ball joints in. Ooh. Alright, got the bottom ball joint in. And that's one receiving cup. And that's the other receiving cup. Or install cup, anyway. It's just big enough to fit on the lip of the bottom of the ball joint. And this upper one has a hole in the top for centering. Should be enough. And well over there. Probably about as good as I'm getting it. That looks like about how it was. It's not in in the back as much as it is in the front. I need to see if I can find my install kit from the other ball joint because you can actually put a full zerk fitting in here unless you had RCV axle shafts, which I plan on getting RCV axle shafts at some point. But man, I got to clean this on the other side. I got to grease it bad because my bottom, I installed the other ball joint and I split the boot uh, when I was putting my knuckle on on the other side. So I need to buy another set of boots and then I got to take that whole side apart so I can replace that boot because I don't want that ball joint going bad. But, uh, anyway, let me do the top, which should be very, very similar. Anyway, I'll be back when I get done, and uh, I guess I'll take the lower control arms off. Alrighty. Got the knuckle back on, got the axle back in. Use plenty of antices, both on that and on the bolt, through bolts. So, next time I'll be taking, so next time I'm taking this apart, it'll be just like it was when I took this one apart, just... Pretty much just wiggled it up and down, pulled it out. But, uh, get all this back together. It's almost 7 o'clock by the time I get done. I might, I might do the lower control arms because honestly it's not that bad. All I gotta do is drop the lower control arms, put my jack underneath the pumpkin. I might do that. Maybe I need to rotate the tires on the Yukon because my front tires are wearing out really bad due to my all my camber problems in the front um so uh all my camera prop camber problems in the front uh caused the outside on outside to wear pretty bad I got plenty of meat on my rear tires but my front tires are wearing out on the outside uh i need to rotate these two i'm going to put that one on the back and bring that one to the front because those are that means my Two messed up tires or will be in the back and my two good tires will be in the front. So uh, if tires had a thing to do, tires can also cause death wobble. Uh, that'll remedy that. Um, yeah, but uh, <clears throat> hard to speak.
spin because I'm trying to spin that other tire with one hand because I got my locker in the front. Anyway, let's get this back together, get the get all this side back together, and maybe I'll mess with the lower control arms. Maybe I won't. Uh, I, got, I got all day tomorrow to mess with this too. Now the, I got a late start today, so anyway, I'm supposed to be getting those light bars tomorrow too. I ordered a, I ordered a couple more Oxbeam light bars. Because they were 50% off, plus 10% off, plus $5 off. So, I got a, another set of V-Series. Uh, got another two V-Series light bars. These are, uh, this is my 32-inch uh, V-Series light bar. Uh, I ordered two 42 inches for uh, 87 bucks a piece. Because they had the Memorial Day, $5 off. Plus, they had 50% off for their normal weekly slash monthly whatever deals um and then plus i got uh 10 percent off using batsy 71's discount so i basically got 60 percent off plus five dollars off of a 200 dollars light bar so i got two light bars for 87 dollars a piece i could not beat that so uh oh one will be going on the yukon uh don't exactly know I know I'm putting it on the roof, but I'm not, you know, putting it in the front. I don't want to put it in the front. I don't know if I'll mount it on that rear roof rack bar right there. Ooh, ooh. Take that bar and move it up to the front. Okay, take the zoom back. But take that bar, move it up to the front, and then put the light bar right there where my between my two doors. Uh, between my front door and my rear door. Um... Or if I'm just gonna wait and uh, get a whole, get a whole bunch of one inch square tube and make a make a roof rack and then put it put it on the front of the roof rack. Um, the other light bar is going on this. Yes, it's still not necessarily drivable. I mean, it's drivable, but the the front end's gonna explode at any moment. Um, I do I had to replace the battery. I had it sitting too long, and I only got like a 90 day battery because. At the time, I didn't want to spend 150 bucks on a five-year battery and then uh, have it not even crank, so uh, and run. But now I know it cranks and runs. It's it you know it runs fairly well. It still has a slight possibility of needing a head gasket, but I mean, like I said, I'll, I'll know when I change the oil. I'll, once I actually get get a new front end for it and get the get the tags for it, uh, get the title for it. I gotta I'm gonna have to file for a lost title for it because the uh, Dude who I bought it from is not uh, being very cooperative on giving me the title. But I know he has the title somewhere. Probably just lost it. But uh, it was last registered in his name, so he's got the title somewhere. But um, I'll just file for a lost title, do what my buddy's doing for his. Uh, get a title for it, get a front axle for it. And right before I drive it, I need to, I need to change the door locks too. I got, the, I got door locks for it. Uh, I've re-keyed the rear lock. For it because this lock is discontinued and even the aftermarket lock is discontinued there's no way to get this so uh, I took it apart of course I ruined this so I'm gonna have to glue this uh, this back on this this but I pulled it off took the key that I got from uh, from my door locks stuck it in here put all the pins down and turned it where it shaved it down and uh, turned it enough to where I can stick the key in barely pull the key out and it'll turn the lock um, I also need to replace the uh, electronic lock in the hatch because uh, it's got an electronic lock I don't know if the wiring is messed up to it or if it's just bad but get all the door locks so I can at least lock it um, before I start driving it but uh, and before I start driving this, or maybe the first time after I drive it, I'll probably drive it up to work. Um, work one day. But uh, whenever I do that, I'll uh, change the oil and just see if it is milky because it's it's not. When I drained it, even though I ran it quite hard, when I changed the oil, it wasn't milky. So if it does have a head gasket leak, it's a very, very, very small head gasket leak. Anyway, it's not about that, and it's not about my video is not about that or my Yukon it's about my Cherokee but yeah I should be getting two light bars more so I kind of want to mess with those but 
I also need to get this. I need to get this thing back on the road so I can start driving it because I need to start. I need, I'm going to need to be able to have this driving and reliable when I put the uh, axle in the bottom of the Yukon, which again is it's probably six months out, if if not more, because uh, I still got to get parts for it. So slowly but surely, get this thing on the road. Pay off all that steel that I, uh, all that steel from a bumper that I built, and then I can start slowly getting parts for the sawed axle swap. I've pretty much already decided everything I'm gonna I'm gonna get. I pretty much already decided the company I'm going with um, for the main mounts, and then uh, I'm I'm just gonna have to figure out if I'm gonna send that knuckle off and get it drilled, or if I'm gonna get a get a a, a reed uh, racing knuckle for it. Uh, and track bar and all that other crap. But anyway, uh, let's get this back on and maybe I'll start tackling the lower control arm. It shouldn't be too bad. Just two bolts, make sure the axle doesn't roll back. And, uh, probably do one side at a time. Anyway, talk to y'all a minute. Bye. Alrighty. Alrighty, swapping tires front and rear. This is the rear tire. As you can see. Practically brand new, which it should be. Uh, I need I need to find. I think I still got the uh, the invoice from when I got these tires. But oops, here's my disc brake swap too. Disc brake swap using the ZJ rear brakes, and uh, I am super. Ooh. Nope, 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 nope. I still got quite a bit of pad left. I'm surprised these are the pads I pulled out of the junkyard. They were practically brand new, the ones I pulled out of the junkyard. Um, it's wearing, it's wearing a nice spot though. Um, yeah, I never, I never mounted that. I just kept it like that. But uh, uh, there's my disc oops, crap. There's my disc brake swap in the back. ZJ disc brakes. I think out of a '98. Oh yeah, I got my. Got my e-brake on, so I don't even see it, but here's my front tire. As you can see on my front tire, wore down a lot, and there's also a gap. And there's that right there too. But yeah, this is a you can tell it's down there and down that way too a little bit, mostly down this way. And then there's that big cut that I got from uh off road, and there's another big cut. That's what happens when it bottoms out against my fender. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can tell this tire's really worn. Same same way with the other side. But uh, there's my makeshift bump bump stop that I made too. Got it. Up. I found a place online that used to sell something like this. I found a, a tiny picture left over from uh, Google. But, uh, I got those put in right before I got the exhaust done. Anyway, uh, this, this needs a nice tire off wash, uh, pressure wash. I haven't given it a nice tire off pressure wash in years. Uh, but, uh, yeah, let's get this on. At least get the back tire, get that back tire back on. And, uh, maybe I'll pull off one control arm, see what it's like. Anyway, talk to y'all in a minute. Bye. Alright, well that's it for tonight. I decided to go ahead and uh, I'll do the lower control arms when I do the upper control arms. Um, but, uh, get them back together. Needs an alignment bad. I might even need a uh, a spacer for this side. Uh, see, it already had a uh, it looks like both wheels are going in. I don't know. I probably won't do the ball joint. They make a uh, they make a hoop spacer that is designed to correct uh, camber. Uh, if I need a different, if I need a camber correction, then I'll, I'll, I'll try that shim that goes behind the, uh, 
goes on the brake caliper and it also goes on the uh, on the hub and uh, I'll try that because uh, I really don't want to put a shim ball I don't, don't want to put a a, a degree ball joint in. I don't want to put a, a ball joint that has uh, cat, uh, camper correction on it because the whole reason I went with these ball joints is because these are heavy duty metal on metal ball joint that's not metal on plastic. Uh, that's the whole reason I went with them. They're stronger. Um, there is a break-in cycle though too. I haven't I've driven, it, driven this side nowhere near enough for the break-in cycle. But um, I do need to I'm hoping that there's not that camber's not too too. Excuse me. Yeah, camber's not too much off. Um, but uh, yeah, that's. I'll drive it. Drive it in town. See how it does. Um, they said I was supposed to get the uh, the upper control arms tomorrow, but I. I don't know. It depends on where they are tonight. Uh, I could get them tonight. But that's, you know, I don't know. I, I could still get them tonight, but the, the, just when they shipped out, I don't think so, because they were supposed to, sh I would, they were supposed to ship out last week, but, you know, Memorial Day, blah, blah, blah. So uh, they didn't get, get a ship out last week. Though I don't really know why they didn't ship out. They must have, they must have had to make them, but, because uh, everything else shipped out the next day. Uh, they, could, they said it could take up to a couple days if they don't have any in stock. They have to make them, so probably had to make them and send them out. But uh, yeah, I'll get everything else up, get it back, and see if it fixes it. See if uh, tires, putting my bad tires in the back and doing those ball joints help. Uh, if it did, I'm still going to put those control arms in because uh, I want to get more. I, I want to get more caster. I want a little bit more forward caster. Um, uh, so uh, we'll see. Anyway, I'll be back. All right. Well, I'm back, but stopped by a buddy's house on the way home. Went in town, got something to eat, and came back. Uh, I can't tell if it's better than the last time or not. I. I mean, there was only one time that it tried, and again, it was when I was going over some bumps on the road. Um, but it corrected itself. It, it didn't just go all out and continue doing it. So, uh, you know, I can't 100% uh, tell. It seems a lot better than it was, but at the same time, between last time, I don't know. Um, again, it was just ball joints. That's all I did. I didn't do the control arm stuff. I might be getting the upper control arms tomorrow. If I get the upper control arms tomorrow, I'll I'll be working on the I'll be working on the front axle, uh, doing lower control arm and upper uh, lower control arm bushings, upper control arm bushings, and upper control arms, um, and then to the alignment shop because uh, I think a lot of the reason might be alignment. Um, I don't think that's the whole thing, but. I think a lot of it might be alignment, and I need to double check my track bar, make sure my, my axle is even. Um, it might not be. Uh, if it's not, if it's not, um, it's a pain in the butt to adjust because the bushings that Rugged Ridge told me to get out of a rear TJ track bar fit, but there are they are so much thicker than what this was supplied with. I wish they would adjust gave me the part number for the right bushings or sent me the bushings that these are supplied with and not say oh yeah the rear TJ bushings will fit yeah they fit but they're, they're not the same bushings that came with it I had to drill out the I had to drill out the center of the of the uh, of the sleeve because the old sleeves were half inch so I upgraded all my bolts to half inch and then they sent me the sleeves Oh, they sent me the the, the bunch of the part numbers. I got the I got the bushing sets, and the sleeve that they sent me had the stock size center hole, which I can't use now because I drilled out all my I drilled out my axle mount to a half inch, so I had to drill out those those centers to, to accept a half inch bolt. And then when I was trying to put everything together, the shoulders of the bushings are so much thicker than the bushings that they that this track bar comes with. 
uh, it's a little ranting, but that makes adjustments so much harder than it should be. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, I would do control arms if they come in tomorrow. I'll do the control arm, control arm bushings, upper and up, upper and lower control arm bushings, and then the uh, upper adjustable control arms. Um, and uh, measure my lower control arms and measure my upper control arms and make them the same length. Uh, see if my lower control arms are anywhere in spec of where they should be, um, which they might not be. If not, then I guess I'll be ordering me some lower control arms, but I'll probably wait and I'll probably get an alignment first uh, because, I, like I said, I've been running with the setup that it has now for years and I didn't start getting death, 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 death wobble until recently. Um, was then recently driving it. I haven't driven it in almost a year now. Constantly in almost a year now. Uh, driving it every now and again, but not constantly. Um, well, I say almost a year. It's been over six months, I can put it that way, since I've... No, it's probably been a year. I drove it a couple of months, or a month or two constantly, when the Yukon went down. Um, until it, the death wobble just got so bad I couldn't drive it. Um, but I never had death wobble at all when I first did this lift about five years ago. Um, and then it just, front end parts started slowly wearing out and it didn't cause any problems. But then these ball joints went bad on this side and it caused a crap ton of problems. And then uh, I'm replacing all the bad parts and while I'm in there upgrading some parts and it, it, I still got it. So. Um, everything in the front is going to be new. The, these ball joints were bad, so I replaced them. Those ball joints I don't think were bad, but I went ahead and replaced them. Track bar bushings were bad, so I replaced those. Uh, the tie rods were all under warranty, so I went ahead and swapped them out. Um, the hubs, the Timken hubs are only three years old. They don't seem to be bad. Uh, I can't get them to move, so they're, they're neat. I can't get them to move in ways they're not supposed to, so they seem good. Um, uh, the only things that I haven't changed is the, the control arm bushings. Um, which, when I take it apart, I might see that the, the, the bushings are bad, which I'm pretty sure my lower ones are bad. Those lower, my lower ones have been in there over five years. It's probably been about six, maybe seven years. Six, maybe seven years since my lower control arm bushings. Since I, uh, and those are just polyurethane bushings with no tapers on them at all, and I've, I have flexed the heck out of this thing. So uh, those bushings have got to be bad, or at least worn out. So uh, the upper control arm bushings are stock, have never been changed. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if they're bad, so. Um, which I think there is some movement in the upper control arm, so uh, I went ahead and got adjustables because I, I, I need adjustables. My upper control arms are stock, my lower control arms are, are linked. Linked, lengthened control arms from a Procomp lift. So, uh, yeah. Uh, if I get that stuff in tomorrow, I'll be working on this. If I don't get it in, I should be getting a couple light bar. I should be getting those two light bars in. Two more of those, Oxbeam V series, except uh, in 24 inch, or excuse me, except in 42 inches, except uh, besides the 32 I got up there. So, uh, if I get the stuff for the front of the Jeep, I'll be working on the Jeep tomorrow. Uh, after I go to the dentist. If not, I'll be putting a light bar on either this thing or my Yukon, which I'll probably be putting it on my Yukon. Um, I don't got a roof rack for it, and uh, like I was saying earlier, the light bar is going to be way far back, but I mean, be something. Uh, first, I mean, am I going to use it? Yeah, I could, I could see me using it. There's some, there's some time that I would love to have a lot of extra light. Um, on the street, yeah, probably not, because it's illegal to have an upper light bar that's turned on white on the street. So probably won't be using it on the street, but uh, there are times that I work on stuff that, that I could definitely use the light bar while, while we're working on it. Like uh, I was using my winch to load a, uh, uh, a buddy's truck who threw a rod out his motor. I uh, used the winch to pull it up on the trailer, and uh, a, 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 a lot of more light could have been useful. So, uh, that's its uses. Plus, it's only 80 bucks, so why not? Uh, anyway, rambling. So, uh, I'll talk to y'all later.
Uh, I'll probably be another video tomorrow, depending on what I do. Uh, I might be working on the front of this thing, or I might be putting a light bar on the Yukon. I don't know. Uh, so, talk to y'all later. Bye.